Hey, welcome back everybody. So this is going to be an unboxing of some Perry Miniatures U.S. Infantry 1942 to 1945. I just picked these up at a local hobby store. I have actually been wanting these for a while. And I did not know that somebody had them locally. So I saw them on the shelf. And despite purchasing a lot of other things, I had to get these. So I decided might as well make a video while we're getting it. Uh, you can see that runs about $33. You get 42 figures. So basically that's less than a dollar per figure. Let's open them up real quick. I was only able to find two, really more like one and a half videos of unboxings of this particular box on YouTube. So that was one of the reasons I kind of moved this up in my queue. So you get these penny bases, I will call them. Now, I think those are smaller than the Warlord Games bases. And let me see if I can find one to show you. Okay, so I have a sprue of Warlord Games bases here, which you can tell by the back. And these are the Perry bases. So if we were to remove one of these, let's see here. You can see there that it is probably a third of the size of a Perry base. Which is not good. Now, I don't know whether Perry does this because they think you're not going to use these bases anyway. I don't know if they do this because these bases are cheaper. But, I mean, you would think by now that they kind of know that there is a standard base size. And, you know, people would appreciate getting the bases in what is a standard size so you can use them with other things. Let's see if I have a ruler to get a measurement on this base. So this is inches. Uh, so this is about a three-fourths inch base. So that's disappointing. I will not be using these for the figures, obviously. Uh, I will be using these. Hopefully I have enough left over. <laughs> you also get a insert, which I really like these. When uh, Perry does this with a lot of their kits, they will give you an insert, which basically tells you a little bit about, you know, the contents of the box, the units, unit insignia or divisional insignia, uniform markings, clothing and weapons. This is always nice. Uh, I mean, how much useful, practical use you're going to get out of it, uh, I don't know. Like, most of us don't paint insignia on our our soldiers i mean if you have a decal i know people, a lot of people will use some of the uh, warlord games gives you decals which i think is a lot more useful than showing you how to paint what the insignia should look like painted because i'm not going to paint 42 officer stripes although the private you could do real quick <laughs> that's just a line but i do like these i, I like them as an insert I don't know what these are and why we got them. I almost think this is just just maybe for different uh, different games. I don't know if uh, games like uh, Chain of Command or some of the other squad-based World War II games use this. Uh, but I won't be using these. I don't know. I guess. It looks like you can only get two of them on here anyway unless you didn't base them at all, in which case you might could get three, but it wouldn't be enough to do 48. I mean, even if I could get three on here, three times five is 15. The most you could get is 30. So again, that's kind of a waste. Let's take a look at the first of the two different sprues. So the first I'm going to look at is kind of this sprue here, which let me make sure these are the same. Well, that's not the same. Okay, so that's the same. And we've got our weapons. Looks like you got an M30, mean a uh, M30, I mean a 30 caliber, a bazooka, shoulder held bazooka with the rocket. You got some little packs. And you got some arms pointing with a pistol. So those are probably for officers, bodies which are probably for officers 
and some heads or faces. See if we can get a good look at those. So this one is kind of interesting. That guy looks like he's wearing a beanie. This one's helmet has like the mesh on it. This one just has a steel pot. So you do get some different uh, helmets. The expressions are not that, you know, captivating or heroic, but you do get some different helmets there. Uh, and then the other sprue, you will get three of these. So you have this end, which is kind of hard to show uh, the way my camera is. I can't get it all in there. But you have this end with some bodies, a few laying down, figures. Looks like there's a lot of weapons already in hand, which I actually like. Uh, I don't like having to put every weapon in a hand like some of the Warlord Games kits used to be. I mean, it is nice to have to have that option on certain boxes, but I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want to have to do that with every box. So it is nice to buy a box and have the weapons in. Now, I saw one video where the guy was complaining that the shoulders didn't line up right uh, when he tried to pose the figure, but I'm not sure if that's just because of how he was posing them or if that didn't line up right. Um... We got some more heads here, which, again, are pretty expressionless. I mean, there's no sense of action, no sense of whatever. There's one with his mouth open. That's about as much expression as you get. Let's see this one. There's a rifle with a grenade in it. A kind of grenade, uh, grenade launcher or whatever. And this one, I can't get this to focus on that head. Let's see. So I can't make out that expression. Most of them have no expression to make out. I mean, obviously, Perry Miniatures is considered, you know, one of the best, especially in metal. Now, with regards to plastic, I had some Perry Miniatures uh, British... Desert core, whatever they were called. I didn't like them. As a matter of fact, I think they're in my box as part of my giveaway. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, somebody's going to get a, a set of those that are assembled and painted. Uh, well, the next thing to do, I guess, is let's put one together and compare it to a Warlord Games miniature and just see what it looks like. Be right back. And we are back. And I mean, this probably took me three minutes to cut these out, clean them up a bit, and put them on their base. So as you can see, the figure looks nice. I mean, it is a plastic figure, so I mean, the joints are not going to be perfect. They had to cut it somewhere, you know. But, uh... I didn't have any real problem with this, so I'm not sure. This is not the exact one that he was using. I mean, there is a little gap there, but you can actually fill that with some crazy glue and it won't show up uh, after you prime it. Put some crazy glue gel there. But other than that, I mean, I can put the backpack on him, which I haven't done yet, and maybe some other accessories. I will say, I wonder if the backpacks will go on, though, because he seems to have a a latch back there. So I wonder if they molded enough of a uh, gap in the backpacks to account for that, because otherwise that's going to look real bad. And that, that, to me, would be unforgivable, right, if you didn't account for that latch, that strap back there when you made the backpack. So I need to check that out right now. So let's get a backpack on here because I just want to make sure there's not some big space or gap. All right. It doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Uh, let me show you guys a close-up. Uh, 
So that's with the backpack on. I will bring in a Warlord Games miniature. And as you can see, Warlord Games miniature hands didn't always fit perfectly either. You know, they're just being, these were basically uncorrectable unless you wanted to start cutting them up. But they're both on the same base. They're both kind of moving out. I will say this. It's it's very, it's almost indiscernible or imperceptible. But the Warlord Games figures do have more volume than the uh, the Perry miniatures. If you look at the heads, for example, you know, the Warlord Games guy looks like he has a huge head with that helmet on. Whereas the Perry miniature head looks almost tiny. Like you would almost be able to tell that they could not switch uh, helmets. So your Perry miniatures are not going to fit up perfectly. Let's bring another one in here. You know, with a different type of helmet and stuff. As far as the size goes, I don't think there's that much of a difference. Especially if you put them on these bases, which kind of lifts the figure up. That's why it looks to be a little bit higher, but it's probably not. Uh, so I don't think the size is going to be a problem. Like I said, it's just kind of with the heads. You know, there might be a kind of an imperceptible difference. But if you use these all as their own unit, their own squad or platoon or company, then it wouldn't make a big difference at all. I do like the fact that you get some different poses than what you got in some of the Warlord Games boxes. I'm not going to necessarily say better poses, but they're, they're just different. So until I put them all together, I can't really say whether it's better or not. But if you have been thinking of doing getting a box of the Perry Miniatures, hopefully this will help you to make up your mind. Uh, I think there was something on the back. No, that's not it. Because I was going to try to show you the different types of uh, configurations you can do. Here it is. So if you are wondering, you know, what types of configurations are available to you, this is a kind of a diagram. So like this pose you would not get in your Warlord Games box. Uh, this one here you probably wouldn't. This one you wouldn't. This one maybe if you got a good fit. The bazooka firing. That was one I was always frustrated with Warlord Games. Was the bazooka teams were never actually firing. They were kind of just holding the bazooka. So you will get some different poses with this. So you may want to intermix them with your regular Warlord games. But, um, and it, like I said, it wouldn't be that discernible, especially if this guy was painted. I think the fact that he's not painted kind of makes him stand out a little more. If he was painted with the same uniform and color, you know, you might not notice it. Although I guess I will admit the Warlord games figures are a little more cartoony than uh, the boat action. But, you know, that kind of allows you to, to see more detail on them than, for example, this guy's face and expression. So, but there you go. That is an unboxing of the Perry Miniatures U.S. Infantry 1942 to 1945. Okay, everybody. I will be putting some of these in the box. I don't think I can get a whole sprue in there. But I am going to try to get probably at least five to ten of these. Maybe I can cut up one sprue and then drop it in there. Because I am the box is literally stuffed. But uh I want to give some of these away. So I will I will probably cut this sprue in half and then put the two pieces in the box. Which should give you enough to build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like eleven. You could build eleven miniatures on this brew. And this one I took one off, so I guess you would get ten. Which is kind of what I wanted to do. Alright, take care. God bless. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have a group that's been uh
asking about the miniatures, just give them a link to this video. Uh, and say, hey, the Solar War Gaming Show did an uh, unboxing and a comparison. Uh, that way we can get to a thousand subscribers and we can give away the loot box. Take care. God bless.